Hey, interrupting this intro, which I hope you find pretty cool to say, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. More subscribers, more content, more things I can do. Just let me know what you like. Thanks. So today I'm getting ready to start an experiment, which this video will talk about in my description. But before I get too far down that path, I gotta do a health check on So what I've done here is I've pulled out all the plug wires and spark plugs, disconnected the coil wire because you don't want any spark, and then gone under the driver's seat and unplug the fuel pump relay. Next, I take my battery charger and I hook it up, lowest setting to the battery, because I'm gonna be turning it over a lot. I don't wanna drain the battery and get a bad reading. You get your compression gauge out, you screw it into the cylinder. I always like to put it where I can see it. But then you hold the throttle wide open. In this car, you gotta hold the clutch down and then you turn it and crank it. And you want it to crank at least eight to nine times or until the gauge stops going up. So I found on this car eight to nine times, it's where it's perfect. And you can see the results here of this cylinder. That's about 158 pounds. So right between 155 and 160. Everything's been around 155 to 160 from the driver's side to passenger side. Just wanna show you the process, how you check it. And then once you get your reading, you let the air out, go and hook your quick adapter there, and then you literally just turn these out like this, and that's gonna tell me a health check. And what we're doing is, because I don't know anything about this engine, I'm assuming it's all original, um, I'm just making sure that the ring seal between the cylinders is consistent, that the head gasket's not leaking, that the valves aren't leaking. Now we'll tell you- about auto light. 25 plugs in it, which are stock heat range. And they're a little hot, but you can see how the burn is on it. The burn's pretty consistent, but it does have just a little bit of pepper there on it. Now, I am running timing for cast iron heads. I'm running like 15 and a half, 16 degrees of timing in this thing. So um, I am aggressive with the timing, but it helps it in the mid range because of this camshaft in it. It's a bag of three valve injectors that I've had for many years. I had a 2006 Mustang GT three valve, end up taking the stock injectors out, end up putting bigger injectors in it because I put a Celine supercharger on it back in the day. These are actually 27 pound injectors from the factory and they just don't have any O-rings on them. But these injectors have like, I don't know, less than 5,000 miles on them. They're brand new. I've got a brand new set of O-rings coming from Ford to put on here. So I'll have new O-rings for it. And you'll notice it has what we call an EV uh, adapter here. Um, the stock Ford uh, is an EV1, and this is like the EV6 or US car, I think they call it. All right, we'll go into the myth buster part of this now. We're talking about ethanol E85. So E85 is 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. Uh, ethanol is created from the distillation of sugar and that can be derived from corn and sugar cane. Just to give you an idea, that's something that we can grow here locally in the United States. So it's a renewable type of resource. We're not dependent on foreign oil. Uh, some facts about E85. The cost per gallon is cheaper than gasoline. Just to give you an idea, current price on gasoline is about $3.20 a gallon for 87 octane and up to $4 a gallon for 93 octane. By comparison, right now, E85 at the pump, which is also flex fuel, is going for about $2.60 a gallon. Uh, it helps, uh, ethanol helps the engine temps to run cooler. It has a 105 octane rating, which is basically what we call a poor man's race gas. And it reduces detonation, allows more ignition timing. So part of these are, are just some background on why to run E85. The first question people will ask you is, is it so corrosive? And that is true on methanol. 
but this is not meth we're talking about this is ethanol what ethanol does is it has a lot of moisture in there that it removes from the engine when it's running so if you'll notice if you run a catch can on your vehicle and you run the car and go to drain the catch can you'll notice a lot of moisture coming out of it uh, by comparison if you have a car that sits up a lot you need to keep the gas tank full so moisture doesn't get in your tank and kind of ruin uh, your ethanol content if you will so for cars that sit up a lot like i drive these cars basically once a month i make sure when i get through driving them i fill them back up with ethanol and then they're they're fine i've never had an issue with that uh, speaking of um, how to keep maintenance on it uh, if you do an aftermarket fuel system you can get a stainless steel fuel filter that'll be great for long-term ethanol use but if you're using just a standard filter like on my fox body here uh, just keep the filter changed like once twice a year it's not a big deal uh, just kind of routine maintenance on it uh, you can see a decrease in gas mileage just because you're using more fuel so you're going to get worse gas mileage uh, to the point you're probably going to lose at least two to three miles to the gallon less than what you were getting so for example if you're getting 15 miles to the gallon you'll probably get 12 to 13 miles to the gallon and that's driving it the same way clearly the harder you drive it the less gas mileage you're going to get the benefit is you can run more timing. So give an example, my 68 Charger with the Hemi swap in it. Uh, the original tune I had didn't have a lot of time and I had like 18 degrees total timing in it at wide open throttle. And it would kind of spin the tires a little bit at first, but then it would hook and go and it just didn't feel as strong as I thought it should for a Hemi. When I got on the dyno, started tweaking the tune myself on it, uh, on, on ethanol, end up cranking in more timings. End up having like 29 degrees of timing on this thing when all said and done. Reading the plugs, make sure everything's looking good. I tried more and it made less. I tried less and it made less. I found the sweet spot on that car's 29 degrees. And let me tell you, it'll blaze the tires in first. It'll shift a second and keep just burning the tires. It is a night and day difference in that car. Now this is a natural aspirated car that was on pump gas with ethanol. Um, so I'm hoping something similar with the Vox body. I've already got the time in like 15 and a half degrees and uh, it's right on the verge of detonation on 93 um, cause it's got cast iron heads on it. And I'm gonna try to put it on ethanol as part of my myth busting program here and see, um, can you put it on there if I a tune as long as you add 30% more fuel. Uh, I have an air fuel gauge on it. I'll show you some uh, of that, how that looks and what the readings were. And then I'm just getting an idea. So it's around 14.8 to 15.2 is what I've seen on the average cruising around. And when you get on it around low 14s, and um, that was with the 19 pound injectors and 93. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to run as much gas out of it as I can. And I'm gonna put in E and the bigger injectors and just do a comparison. See what the air fuel is, if it's leaner, if it's richer, if it's right in the middle. And uh, we'll see how it goes, see how it drives. And once I can get it, Basically to a dyno, I can start adjusting the timing more. I can mess with the timing on the street and get a good reading on the plugs. But for now, it's just an experiment to see, is this possible? Is it a myth? Is the car gonna run horribly? Or is it gonna run great? We'll find out shortly. All right, that was pretty straightforward. Here's the adapters, the factory harness clips right on. I put a little bit of petroleum jelly on the O-rings, just a little bit top and bottom. Put them in, turn them a little bit when I'm putting the rail on, just to make sure everything seats up properly. You don't want a fuel leak. Tighten these down for the fuel rail hold downs. Get everything out of the way, and now I'll put the intake back on, torque it down, and we'll fire it up. Now, it's definitely gonna be rich, because we went up 30%, a little over 30% bigger on the injectors. They're 27 pounds instead of 19. These were the 19 pound injectors I'd put in when I got the car from Fuel Injector Clinic. And they were just stock replacement, but I wasn't sure if the injectors I had were any good or not. So they seem to be fine. Uh, one thing in the video you're watching now, which is uh, uploading the, to YouTube here, um, 
That one's showing the installation of a wide band gauge that I did. And the sensor that came with it seemed kind of hokey. It was running like in the 15s most of the time, even when I got on it. And so I swapped it out for a different O2 sensor that I use on my Mach 1 and my black TT sling. And um, it seemed to be reading more in the 14 range. So I think the sensor was just uh, not that good in that fake AEM wide band kit. But other than that, the sensor works fine. So now I have a better idea of what it's gonna run, but I'm assuming if it's running, you know, 14.7 Stoich, um, now it should be running probably in the 13s, which is fine. Just to go ahead and run this gas out of it, then I'll put ethanol in it and it should go back to normal. But we'll see, it's part of the myth buster. Let's see what happens. All right, just like that, it's back together. Pretty simple. About a half an hour to knock it out. Now I gotta hook the fuel pump relay back up. Right. Now it's starting to warm up the sensor. You can see it's rich. It's definitely richer than it was by a full point, which is fun because when we run all this pump gas out of here, which if you can see, I still got about a quarter tank to go. I'll go drive it out, it'll be rich, but we'll get rid of that gas, and then we'll put ethanol in here, and you'll see the air fuel actually go back up where it needs to be. So right away you can tell, with this new wideband sensor that I put in it, it definitely reads better than it did before. It actually goes richer like it should. <laughs> I mean, really, no tune, pump gas, it runs great. You can see, cruising, it's like 14 and a half. When I step on it, it goes 12.0. So that's how you clearly know it's a lot richer now because the 27s are flowing more than 19s, but that's okay, I'm fine with it because as soon as I run this gas out, I'm gonna put E in here and then it's gonna actually lean that out at least a point, so that'll be back to 13. So this thing is gonna be awesome. I'm excited. All right, made it up here to the gas pump. There's the yellow handle. All right, moment of truth. around 
the temperature should run a little cooler, but you can see we're right a, a little tick over the A in normal, which is about where it normally runs. All right, it's running great. I want to show you something called the art of the power shift. Now what the power shift is, is when you stomp on the gas and you don't move your foot and you clutch it. So, I'll get down here when we go to first gear. We'll do a little. Here's how to power shift. tried to rinse it off or I'll pull it in so I can wipe it down after driving in the rain but it's awesome 